Scarlet Blade is one of the few MMORPGs that were developed to cater to a much more mature audience. The game was published in North America and Europe by Area Games in 2013, then shut down shortly after in 2016 when Area Games found that they just couldn't milk their dwindling player base with the little amount of effort that they put into the game. As of 2021, there exists a single incarnation of the game left playable for players looking to delve into the weird, slightly lewd, yet wonderful world of Scarlet Blade. Now, if you want to stay up to date with everything concerning any and all of the latest MMORPG news, scroll down, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, and become part of our community. Scarlet Blade does many things right, but it is not without its faults. Yes, initially, much like the majority of you who clicked the thumbnail, Scarlet Blade caught my attention due to the use of sexualized character models. Korean MMOs do this all too often. Vindictus, Black Desert Online, Blade and Soul, Terra, Regardless of the type of game, regardless of the developer, there is one resounding similarity between each and every single Korean MMO. They are all pay to win. Actually, you know what? Okay, there are two similarities. They are all pay to win, and they always have absolutely amazing looking character models. But often, underneath that shallow surface, you'll find that the games themselves are equally as shallow in terms of complexity, depth, and sheer content. Scarlet Blade offers some beautiful classes, all of which, with the exception of one, happen to be women. Yes, the classes are gender-locked, a staple of Korean development. And while that was definitely limiting, you were given quite a few options for customizing your character. While nowhere near as extensive as many current generation Korean MMOs, with the entire Korean MMO genre priding themselves on the extent of their customization options, you could create something that looked and felt unique. This was further solidified by their skill trees. Each class has a wide selection of different skills that they can distribute skill points into. While I'm certain that there were some cookie cutter builds, you know me, I just dumped my skill points into whatever looked and sounded the coolest. But this provides you the option of making a character that is contrastingly different to the norm and is one of the most fun parts of actually playing an MMO with class customization like this. Outside of the classes though, the world itself feels a little bit flat, uninspired. There are large groups of monsters found in every direction, but the area of aggression is almost non-existent. This made it very difficult for someone like me who enjoys grouping together large hordes of monsters and aiming them down to really enjoy the combat. Coupled with the fact that the vast majority of quests that I came across over my week long playthrough were go ahead and kill 10 or 20 or 30 of X monster or obtain 10, 20, 30 items from the very same monsters we sent you out to kill literally five minutes ago, and you have yourself a very limiting, unenjoyable leveling experience. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't really all too different from the vast majority of other MMOs out there. It's more of the fact that the monsters just had such large pools of HP, they didn't really react to engagement and provided no real challenge that questing became much more of a chore than anything else. Thankfully, you can both accept and complete quests regardless of where you are in the world. This means that you're not moving through centralized quest hubs with within each zone. Instead, as you complete your current quests, new ones instantly pop up and you can begin those right away. Speaking of the combat though, Scarlet Blade uses mostly tab target, but employs a semblance of action with regards to your AoEs. You don't need to select an enemy to use your AoEs, but the vast majority of your abilities do in fact require a target. Abilities themselves were fast, they were responsive, and they looked impactful. I don't believe I had any crowd control abilities whatsoever, which I believe would have definitely come in handy, but I was beginning to get stunned by monsters as I did progress through the game, which leads me to believe that I would have likely unlocked access to at least a few at some point. I did find that the class I opted to go was initially very powerful, but monsters caught up very quickly, leaving me spamming abilities six, maybe seven times just to down a monster five levels lower than me. The HP scaling is absolutely atrocious in Scarlet Blade, especially given that the enemies did negligible damage to me. This just drew out the fights much longer than they needed to be. Maybe this was due to the class I chose though, maybe other classes are exponentially more powerful than mine was and I just needed to reroll. Now, while I did definitely find some issue with the AI, while I definitely had some issue with the HP scaling in terms of enemies and my abilities, overall the combat itself as far as a tab target MMO goes 
was definitely above average. I know that there were PvP battlegrounds present within the game, but there was nobody around to actively participate in them with me. I attended to queue for them, but honestly, no one was ever present, so I just opted to not bother attempting to acquire any footage, even though I really wanted to. There are dungeons and raids within the game. I did my first dungeon, I believe, in the second region I made it to. This dungeon was doable either solo or with a group. It looked as though it was definitely scaled to be easy enough for a single player to complete, thankfully, as finding other players to run these dungeons with would have proven to be more challenging than the dungeons themselves. I'm not entirely certain how complex the raids are, as I've never really made it to endgame to really get a gauge for it, but given that the dungeons were more or less a room or two with groups of monsters, I'd hope that they provided a little more diversity. I did note that the first dungeon was located in the second region that I made it to a little earlier. I'm not sure if you guys caught that, but yes, Scarlet Blade's world is in fact segregated, much like in Final Fantasy XIV or Guild Wars 2 or Blade and Soul, the world is split up between loading screens. This in no way means that the game is instant though, you'll find hundreds, well, okay, you know what, let me rephrase. You could potentially find hundreds of other players around the world in any given area, grouping together, questing, fighting monsters. It's unlikely, given the population of the game right now, which has definitely seen better days, but one would take a wild guess here and assume that after being online for going on a decade by this point, the vast majority of players are at endgame, saving the world over and over from the foulest of creatures. Honestly though, I am used to segregated zones in my MMOs. Every big MMO these days either seems to utilize the very same thing, or is going to be utilizing the same thing when they ultimately release, like Blue Protocol, Lost Ark, Tower of Fantasy. Not only is it just easier on the servers themselves as they have less load for each zone, but it just makes more sense to not have to load hundreds of players everywhere you go. I can first see this definitely being a much bigger issue for MMOs that employ open world PvP like Black Desert or Blade and Soul, but honestly, I have never had an issue with it. Well, okay, in retrospect, maybe playing on a PvP server in World of Warcraft and you know when you would go and hop on a Zeppelin or a boat and it would take you through a loading screen from one continent to the other, occasionally you would load in completely dead. So that was probably an issue that definitely plagued the PVP servers in a game like World of Warcraft. But other than that one single instance in that one single game, I have never had an issue like that anywhere else. But I do know that some people have an issue with zone segregation due to it feeling disconnected and immersion breaking. Scarlet Blade is a game with an enormous world. There are plenty of monsters to fight and the questing system makes it much easier to move around the world without trekking back and forth between quest hubs. The combat is above average and honestly both looks and feels pretty good. There's plenty of customization over your character both in terms of aesthetic and build. The character models look stunning even a decade later. The game is aimed at a much more mature audience and that leads to seeing more than what you're used to from NPCs and at times yourself or even enemies. Scarlet Blade is a game with an enormous world, yet the world itself feels barren and pointless. You move in a linear path between objective points before moving on to the next zone with no need for exploration. The AI is very unresponsive and completely ignores you even when you stand two feet in front of them flailing around. Classes are gender locked, meaning that if you don't want to play as a female, then you're out of luck. The player base is very low, meaning that it's difficult finding people to even play the game with. Ultimately, Scarlet Blade is a fun MMORPG. Is it the best MMO? Far from it. It definitely does some things right, but it does just as many things wrong. It looks and feels great at times, but it definitely shows its age. If you want an MMO purely for character eye candy, then sure, you could play this, but there are much better alternatives out there. Now, if you have never played Scarlet Blade before, then I do urge you to go ahead and try the game out because this is probably an experience you will not get anywhere else. Someday soon, I'm gonna make it.